Super excited. The binary goes out for a maiden tomorrow, and I have flaps. I can't believe I just said that. Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode, I want to share you with you a real-life example of using some logic conditions within iNav. Now, let me just set the scenario: is that to the left of me, and apologies, my web camera is not working today. I have no idea why, but we're going to plow on anyway. Anyway, getting back to my point is that next to me I have the Sonic model binary. So those of you which know the binary, I'll put a photo up on your screen, is that A, you have ailerons out on the wingtips, and also you have, well, ironically, they call them flaps, but they're not really flaps, they're just extended ailerons. Now, because uh, they, uh, let's not even go there. However, what I would like is that for me to be able to use the flaps, so, there's me using the little turn switch on the left-hand side of my Tyrannus, but only when another switch is enabled. Now, obviously, I could do this within the Tyrannus. However, I set myself the challenge of being able to do this via iNav because I wanted to use this programming tab. So let me just explain what's going on here. So channel three, so our channel three, the servo mixer, so uh, the output on the board for servo three or S3 is uh, channel nine. Now channel nine is that if we go to receiver, channel nine is the slidey switch. And by the way, you can hear it moving. Let me just turn that off a mo. You'll see that the slidey switch on the left hand side is going up nice and linearly. Okay. However, you're not hearing <laughs> there's a lost model online. You're not hearing the servos move. Then why is that? The reason for that is that if we go back to the mixer tab, you will see that I've got the output for the flaps as being RC channel 9, so as normal. However, we've got something special going on over here on the right hand side. Now, normally you would have this as active always. However, we want a logical condition to be applied to this. In other words, when I turn one of the switches on, flaps, flaps and then I can then use it, but then when I turn it off, it's no longer moving. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. So where do these logic conditions come from? They come from the programming tab. So what I've got, in fact, just, just note that that's channel eight. If we go to the receiver tab and look for channel eight, which is just there, if you'll see, there you go, you'll see that moving. And you, you'll also hear the lady in the background uh, amber, in fact, and there's the lost model alarm, uh, you'll see that it's moving either side of 1500. So if we go back to the programming tab, we'll see that logic condition one is enabled, and I've set that to greater than RC channel eight. And why channel eight and not channel nine? Because remember the outputs on channel nine? RC channel eight is the switch. So we're checking the switch. So the program, and what we're saying is that when that value is over 1400, why 1400? Receiver tab. Look at the value in the middle for channel 8. So you'll see it's 988, Flaps. 1500, and 2000. Flaps. So when it's in that middle range, so I've gone up and down by 100, is that so greater than RC channel 8, value 1400, active always. Then, because I don't want it active when I put the switch all the way down, I've then set lower than RC channel value. Uh, RC channel 8 value 1600 so we really are just in that middle range okay so there's our two logic tests and that lost model I'm just really doing my dream <laughs> can't complain if you've ever lost a model in the field you, you will adore it so the last condition is that we are doing an and condition we are doing uh, because we can only choose one option back here in the mixer in here is that we need to do an AND condition. We, I want it to be, so the logic condition is that when that switch is in the middle, so above 1400 and below 1600, is that then that logic condition, so we've got AND, and we'll get to the options in a moment, so between zero, so that one there being on, and then this one, so they've both got to be on, okay? So you'll see status, only one of those is on, so the output of this one is disabled. So if I do that, it is now enabled, and if I press the switch all the way down, is that only the first one's on, but the second one's not valid. So we go back, to, that's the middle position, and then that's off. And that is how I can have, or you can have, flaps on a switch with a lost model alarm. 
<laughs> Sorry, it's on the rudder stick. That is how you can have flaps on a switch using logic conditions within iNav. I sincerely hope that makes sense because it all, it's a nice combination between logic conditions in here and the mixer over on this side. And it's not like a boring example of using it to change the VTX power level or something like that, which I've seen many videos for, which are a bit boring. This one is really interesting because it has a direct relationship with the output on a physical surface within the model. So let's just pause for a moment to have a look at some of the other options which we've got available to us. So that let's just go and choose greater than, and then you'll see the different conditions here. You can do it to any of the RC channels. You could do it to the flight whole, whoa, like if the model is in return to home, that you can then trigger another condition to happen. Uh, so uh, I, I'm just like ideas coming off the top of my head, uh, off my head. Um, so for example, if the RSSI drops to a certain level, you can trigger return to home over what the uh, iNav would do to do uh, happen. Uh, maybe you want so that if your uh, and, and it's not greater than if it would be something like true uh, or equal and then you would have a flight and then home distance uh, and then you could have set it if the flame if home distance was greater than say uh, now I would assume that would be in centimeters so say uh, five is it 50,000 yeah 50,000 for 500 meters a really nice little training mode which would be if it went past 500 meters then it would send the model into return to home which would be a really simple like very basic trainer uh, and these are just ideas as uh, they they are coming ad hoc uh, to me as I'm literally going through you can see the uh the lost model alarm so you can see here in the list there's a whole collection of different options that's flight mode and what I'm going to do I'm just going to encourage you to go and take a look at these uh, and you can then do conditions on top of other things and remember uh, what I've had to do here let me just get rid of that one uh, there is that what I've had to do is do two checks because I wanted it between a range and then I've used this logical uh, option in here which is and I could have set that to or so if it was above uh, or below and then that would mean that it's not in the middle if that makes sense uh, and uh, set that one there to or and then it would have been I would have had flaps both on the top of the switch and the bottom of the switch but not in the middle of the switch so there you go that is a very quick introduction to the programming tab and a real life example. So let me just quickly reiterate, let me just go back over what we've been and done. In the mixer, I have uh, RC channel uh, nine being output on the uh, servo number three or uh, the pinout number three on the flight controller so that I can have the flaps to work. However, I only want the flaps to work when a specific condition is met, which is on channel eight. So if I go to the receiver tab, there's channel eight. So when I put it into the middle position, flaps, you've heard the transmitter tell me flaps, is that now I can use the side scroller and it works. But the second I go above, those flaps no longer work. Or the second I go below, that also no longer works. And the reason for that is because we have applied a logic condition to channel eight so that it's above 1400 and it's below 1600. And then we've done the final comparison between an and comparison. So both logic condition one needs to be true and logic condition two also needs to be true too. So there you go, I am, I'm clapping, I'm super excited. I've been looking for this reason to use this logic functions. And the second that I've needed it, I, I literally had it worked out in a few moments. And as you may tell by my excitement, I'm really chuffed to be able to do that. And I tell you what, let me just go down here and hit save because there's one last thing which I wanna share with you is that you can copy these conditions from one model to another, assuming that you have the same mixer layout. So if I type in diff here into the bottom uh, and then scroll up is, there we go, that is the logic conditions. And if you wanted to copy those conditions, assuming you have the same mixer uh, set up for, you, for the, the, the other model, is that you could copy those logic conditions and between your different models. So there you go, uh, I, I, that is a real world example of using those programming functions within iNav to do something which is 
actually really useful. So any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments section underneath this video. Maybe you have an annoying lost model alarm as well, or maybe you have used that programming tab. In fact, let's just nip back there for a moment. Uh, maybe you have used that programming tab for other means. If you've used it for something else, I would love to hear from you to let, so you can let me know what you're actually using it for because I'm, I'm just super excited by having the ability to turn flaps on or off via iNav and not having to program it in the Tyrannus, which is the, the logic is where it should be. It should be with the model. It shouldn't be in the transmitter because I've got other models which I may want other logic conditions on. And of course, I've got other models which I want to use that model memory in the Tyrannus. However, I don't want to use flaps. Well, the model doesn't have flaps. <laughs> it's the best example. So let me know how you've been using the logic conditions uh, with your model and perhaps is this something which you didn't even know that INAF did or perhaps even didn't even know how A, it didn't exist and B, would you use it? Let me know, comment section underneath this video and from myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to join me here for this video. Super excited, the binary goes out for a maiden tomorrow and I have flaps. I can't believe I just said that. So Matt, with his flaps, are going now. Cheerios! <laughs>